Financial Survival Network, helping you survive and thrive in the new economy. Go to carrylutz.com and sign up for 30 free micro trainings on financial survival. This show is now brought to you by Miles Franklin. And when it comes to protecting your wealth, you know there's nothing better than gold and silver. That's what I'm buying. I hope you're doing the same. And once you make the decision to buy gold and silver, there's no better place than Miles Franklin. Look, they've been in business 22 years. And the reason I'm a customer is because when you buy, they ship. Go to milesfranklin.com or call them at 800-822-8080 to get a free quote. Fourteen ninety WGCH. This is Carrie Lutz. You're listening to the Financial Survival Network. If you're wondering how much longer the euro can go on, or what's with these gold and silver prices, there's only one person you need to hear, and that is the international forecaster, Bob Chapman. Welcome back, Bob. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, nice to be here every other week. You know, every time I think of gold, I think of that song. Forever and ever, I'll always be true. I don't know if any of you can remember that because you're not old enough. My grandmother but, uh, used to sing it. was quite a nice it. song. My grandmother used to sing it. I remember. She had a good voice. Is that right? <laughs> yes, she did. But anyway, um, it's the only true money. And, um, of course, uh, silver takes a close second. And we've got it down today about $14 on the call. But that's okay. That's your government having fun. And uh, more problems are cropping up. Uh, it seems like this um, CEO of MF Global was uh, the one who actually gave the instructions and made the deal. And uh, what kind of a deal that was uh, remains to be seen with J.P. Morgan Chase, which they have to testify, I think it's tomorrow, on what might have been their part in it. Now, you got to go back uh, to the testimony before the Congress uh, by Mr. Corzine, and when he said, I don't know where the money went, he said it over and over again. I don't know where the money went. Well, we now find out that the people who gave the money to, they remembered. <laughs> and uh, I think Mr. Corzine's in a heap of trouble. Yeah, well, the lady who uh, was in Chicago, Edith O'Brien, is planning to plead the fifth because they haven't given her immunity yet but at some point they're going to have to give her immunity or otherwise the thing is just going to be perceived to be the fix that it has been so far but certainly Corzine is becoming more of a liability to the elites than an asset and his his fate is looking more and more sealed isn't it I think think? he's going to go to Bernie's place. (laughs) Bernie's. He's going to have a weekend at Bernie's and not the the dead Bernie, but the uh, Bernie Madoff and Club Fed, right? Yep. (laughs) I didn't think about that, but uh, uh, sometimes there's uh, just rewards, right? Sometimes people... There's got to be a levity in these things. (laughs) We can't be uh, straight guys all the time. One of the problems I have on radio... Is I don't sensationalize anything. <laughs> Just tell people what I think the truth is and what might be a solution. And uh, it's brought a very, very large following. People like truth. And um, I, I get really upset with some of these entertainers uh, who are moderators, uh, have guests on, who make up the most cockamamie stories I've ever heard about uh, how that coin's uh, safer than that coin over there or uh, it's coming to an end uh, in, uh, in the stock market and um, particularly uh, gold and silver shares. And, you know, all this misrepresentation is just dreadful. Uh, the unprofessionalism, the lack of training, the lack of understanding is, is awful. Uh, some of these news agencies have 10 and 20 people to write for them, and they tell them, hey, you 10 guys over there, you write about how good gold, good gold is, and you ten over there, you write about how bad gold and silver is. Now, what kind of a thing is that? What do we have to have somebody to keep the pot boiling for us? Don't we have enough trouble with the United States government? We 
being nothing more than a criminal syndicate as an, as an adjunct to Wall Street and banking. I mean, all these people are doing is aiding and betting to make a cheap buck. Yeah, it's a, it's a bit disheartening because you don't have to look that far to find the truth. You just have to look behind their words, look at their deeds. You know, as that old biblical saying is, uh, by their deeds you shall know them. It just becomes obvious of what is really going on and how the people are being deceived and what it is they're trying to do here. And that's what's really distressing about it is people don't want to look and they don't, they're lazy and they just don't take the time to really try to figure out what's going on and bother you. Yeah, it does. And there's a giant hole there. Yeah, so, and we shouldn't have to put up with that. So, so what's the key, Bob? <laughs> what's really the well, key? Well, I think what people have to do is just look a little further. Which, They're just terrified to say that the gold and silver market is manipulated. Or they're very remiss in understanding really what's going on behind the scenes but won't talk about it. Or they're dumb enough not to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Now, which is worse? Well, they're all bad. So my advice to them is stop sensationalizing to sell your pal your publication and your tapes and, and all whatever you're doing. And you know, try telling people the truth. I mean, do you really want to have people going off on a tangent, doing something that you recommended with no basis whatsoever? Now, that's wrong. Yeah, it really is. It's just doing a disservice, you know, it's just playing the same tune, letting people uh, stay content with what they believe to be the truth, which isn't. And then it's just setting them up for so much pain and suffering and sorrow later on down the road that, you know, to avoid a little bit of immediate pain, you just ruin their lives. And I don't see how people can live with that. Don't get it. I don't either. But we're telling but, the you truth. You know, the old way was, uh, look, kids, it's simple. You just tell the truth, and you don't have a problem. Yeah, yeah, really, really sad. But uh, we're trying to tell the truth. We're trying to get it out here, and I think more people are beginning to catch on, and more people are understanding what's what's happening around them and i'm sure you see it i'm sure you're seeing increases in subscribership increases in the email you get and increases in people listening to the shows that you're on i mean i know i'm seeing it here there's letters come from all over the world everywhere yeah and there is no real place to hide from this because it's coming you can't do anything about it all you could do is prepare you can't hide from it I don't think that China's currency at the end of the day, when everything hits the fan, that their currency is going to survive any better than the euro or the dollar or the yen. How can it really, you know? They don't have enough gold yet either. Right, right. How much gold do they need? Uh, 20%. 20%? So, yeah, because I remember reading that in the Great Depression, when it hit, the United States had 40% of 40% gold backing for the currency. So right now, what would we have to raise the price of gold to, to get to, to get that kind of backing again? I mean, it'd be, uh, over $10,000 an ounce, wouldn't it? You don't ask me, I haven't figured it out, but all, all I know is it's much, much higher. Yeah. Which means uh, deflation, right? We're either talking deflation or massive devaluation or revaluation against gold, but eventually, they're going to have to pin it to gold because if they don't, there isn't any credibility or trust in the currency, is there? Well, in just the last 10 years, uh, the dollar's lost on the dollar's value. I mean, it's no wonder others don't want to accept it as a reserve currency. For the United States and the world to dig its way out of this hole, they really have to reverse course like almost today and stop spending money they don't have, pin the currency to... Uh, to something that has value and always has had value and totally change everybody's expectations and throw out the uh, kleptocrats, right? So what are the chances of that happening? The only way that's going to happen is with a collapse. Yeah, which is And sad. that's what we need. Yeah. That's classical. That's what we should be doing. We're not. They're holding on to power. What's going to happen? They're going to lose that power. Even if they have a war, this time they're going to lose it because we know what they're doing. We being the public of the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the best investment 
here uh, just over the last, since the beginning of the year is gold. And it's incredible. Yeah. And every, every single inch of the way on the major media, the pundits, all of the people that they bring in, these so-called experts, are all telling everybody that it's really terrible, really terrible that people would buy gold. And, and I'm, I'm looking at the figures on CNBC right now. The best investment, gold. And it's been going on for 12 years. And it just shows you how powerful the status quo is. It won't always be that way. Will you live long enough? I'm sure you will. This thing will come to a head in the next four or five years. Maybe sooner. It could be sooner. And so uh, what we do is uh, continue to go to the safest investment in gold and silver. Yeah, there's really no choice when you uh, get down to it. What else can you possibly do? Where else can you go? And the answer is nowhere. I saw a report yesterday from uh, uh, Goldfields Minerals Association, or whatever they call it now. Um, and they said that uh, the investment demand for silver this year will far outstrip for production. Well, that means the only people who can meet demand are people who already have silver investors. And then the big question comes up, are they going to sell? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Are you selling? <laughs> I'm not. Not me. <laughs> not me. And nobody else Locked I know. Locked in a great big safe, and uh, it's going to stay there uh, during the duration of this monstrous thing that we're experiencing. Right now, there's a big fight going on on the gold market. Goes off uh, 10, then 14, then 22, and now it's back to my, uh, minus 17. So there's all sorts of uh, wild and woolly things going on. Yeah, well, at some point, the paper game is going to end. I mean, really, that it's gone on this long is just a testament to their desperation, but it's going to end, and at that point, we'll find out what true price discovery is. We'll find out the true value of gold, or, you know what? Actually, we will find out the true value of paper currencies. Right now, they're just holding it down, and there is no price discovery. When that happens... And what these criminals have been doing, which is ever more important because we don't want this to happen again. I mean, we had to check out and see how much room there is at Bernie's place. <laughs> uh, I wish, I wish I was still at the point where I believed, uh, in the ultimate justice, Bob, but it's, uh, it's so hard to believe in it. Uh, when you see what's happening, I mean, you know, they're just getting away with, uh, with murder, literally with murder. It's complete lawlessness and it's a complete rape of the taxpayer and uh, and the citizen. It's just, who would have ever believed you could live to see something like this? Would you? It's, uh, it's spellbinding. We need, uh, what was his name, Judge uh, Roy Bean. That's who we need. <laughs> Line him up, and if they're guilty, hang him right there. Yeah, on the spot. Yeah. Jersey Justice, that's what we have now. We have Jersey Justice for Corzine, and, you know, it just, uh, ugh. Well, get my blood boiling, but I do believe that, uh, that there's a way out, and the way out is gold and silver, and also the way out is reading and getting the right information, which means subscribing to the International Forecaster, right, Bob? Well, I should hope so. <laughs> I want to leave all those people in the darkness out there. Definitely not. In a, uh, in, a, in a method of reporting, it is not sensationalized. We just call it the way it is, and we hope we're right. Yeah, well, we've been right and so we've far. We've been lucky enough that we've been pretty close. But the forecast is about business, finance, economic, social, and political issues all over the world. And we publish by email. On Wednesday and Saturday, it usually runs around 35, 40 pages. We have a hard copy that goes out twice a month for those who are not on the internet. And everything you need to know is in that publication every week. You get a free introductory copy by going to the international forecaster.com. The international F O R E C A S T E R dot com. You can also go to www. I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com, intforecaster dot com. And those of you who would like to ask a question and we answer everyone, or if you'd like a copy of the publications, or 
If you'd like a copy of our latest report in Golden Server Shares, email us, and, and that address is Bob, B O B, at I N T F O R E C A S T E R dot com. Bob at intforecaster.com. And for those of you who <clears throat> would like to call toll free, that number is 877 479 8178. That's 877 479 8178. You can get the copies there. And also, if you want to become a subscriber, uh, they're making an offering there. And it's for a free one year subscription. And um, Anybody who wants to become a subscriber should look into that because it's a terrific deal. All right, Bob. Been a longtime subscriber to The Forecaster myself. Got great information. I don't know how you get it all out every week, <clears throat> twice a week. I think I'd be lost without it. Bob, we will see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you, and thank you all for listening. Bye-bye.